Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Entrepreneurial Truth Podcast. My guest today is Carmen Venturci, and she believes that we all have the power to take action to design the lives we want to live. She is a master at using mindset and action to help others find personal and financial success so they can live their passion. She recently left her corporate job to start her own company, True SISU Life which specializes in clearing limiting beliefs, allowing clients to focus on the future, and transforming corporate employees to entrepreneurs. Carmen is also an author, real estate investor, entrepreneur, and self-described badass mom to six kids. Carmen is currently a Taekwondo provisional belt and will be earn her black belt in 2020. She lives in Minnesota with her family. Welcome to the show, Carmen. Hi, thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, it's so good to have you on tonight. I really appreciate this. Awesome. awesome. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. So the first question I generally <laughs> ask is, what lit the fire for you to want to become an entrepreneur in the first place? You know, it was a culmination of a lot of things. So I was in the corporate world for 16 years. I was doing pretty well. I was a Lean Six Sigma black belt when I left the corporate world. And so what that is, it's a lot of continuous improvement processes, a lot of really, you know, you can have really big projects that save millions of dollars. You can have little projects that save a couple thousand dollars. And my favorite part of the job was coaching what we called the green belts, which was a, like a lower level continuous improvement person, uh, not their full time job. And that was the best part because I just loved helping get these these colleagues from point A to point B and helping them shine and, you know, have those successes in their projects. So really. I was doing it for so long and I was starting to be unfulfilled and I did not see the fix of moving to a different job or moving to a different company as being something that I would, I would find fulfilling. And I also had quite the, the past two years have been a little crazy for me and my family. We've had up team medical emergencies. Um, we went from, you know, I have six kids. We went from, four kids to six kids overnight because we took in two of our nieces to come live with us. And what, what, what was kind of the kicker is my sister had a stroke back in March of last year at the age of 36, which is just mm. crazy. And she, she survived. Thankfully we did. It was one of the, it was a big one, huge stroke. Uh, we didn't know if she was going to make it through the night, the first night. And she's doing okay. She's at home with her family. She's recovering a little bit more every day. It's not an instant fix with stroke recovery. It's not Amazon Prime where you get better in two days. So thankfully, she is still with us and still kicking and kicking ass. That really shook me, as you can imagine. And I realized, you know, what am I doing? I want to leave. I have this plan to exit. How come I'm waiting so long to exit? So I figured out uh, how to basically accelerate my timeline for my exit by seven months. My original, I call it my corporate dropout date. My original corporate dropout date was December 31st of 2019. So as of this recording about a month ago was my original plan. And I dropped out of corporate on June 4th, 2019, almost seven months ahead of schedule. Wow. Because I, 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 I just realized it's not worth it. I was, yeah. I was so unfulfilled and just, I hated going to work at that point. I love the people I work with. It was just, I couldn't do it anymore. And I had this wake up call. I had a ton of wake up calls staring me in the face saying, look, you got to do something and you got to do it soon. And you're smart enough to figure it out. So that, that was the culmination. You know, like I said, it was a lot of things. That was the culminating event that just made me say enough is enough. Let's do this. Absolutely. We're, we're going to take this seriously. 36. I'll tell you what. 36. Um, I was 36. I had kidney failure. Both oh kidneys. Yeah. Uh, I was on dialysis for three and a half years after that, almost died like three times during the process. Oh my goodness. So when you said that, it really hit mm -hmm. me. I can um, tell, yes. Life-changing events, things that are unforeseen will cause us to do amazing mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. You lit up when you said that you were helping other people to achieve their goals corporately. Mm -hmm. So yes. I can see that's a passion for you. It just comes out of you. You can just see it. Mm -hmm. just, just, your face just lights yeah. up when you talk about it. Oh, thank you. So now I know where your passion is. I know mm -hmm. who you want to serve. How did you exit 
corporate America. And what did you start doing? So that's a good question. Um, I wrote a, like a short ebook on exactly what I did on how to, and how to get out. So nice. The, the, the point is I planned my butt off. Okay. So I wanted to minimize leaving things to chance. And I wanted to make sure I thought of everything I could think of. Yes, I know contingency plans may be needed. I know you don't know everything. Um, but there was three plans essentially that I put together. So number one, it was a business plan. First and foremost, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, I don't care what you're going to do. You need a business plan. And really what that business plan is going to do for you, not, is, no, not only is it like a tangible thing you can carry around and show people, it's going to give you clarity. So as you're writing the business plan, you're going to figure out, okay, yes, this might, th this is not going to work. This might work. I need to test this. I'm sure about this. I'm still unsure about that. It's going to help you get the clarity to run your business. So that was the first thing I did. Uh, number two, I did my dropout date plan. So I said, okay, if I'm going to leave corporate, this is what I need to have in place. There's so many things you need to think about. Um, retirement accounts. A lot of us get life insurance from our corporate mm -hmm. jobs. Um, health insurance. You know, I said, I, I have six kids. I am, I am a believer in health insurance. I'm not letting them go without health insurance. And just things like, all right, you know, get all those in place. Um, one thing I wish I thought of, I didn't think of, is banks love to loan to people with W-2s, right? And when you're an entrepreneur, you probably don't have a W-2. So should I have taken out an equity loan? Maybe on my home. I didn't. I'm, you know, it worked out. But that's something I tell people is people love banks, love W-2 people for loaning money. So if you need money, you have another project, you might want to do that or even to start your business. Um, so th th that's my corporate dropout day plan. And I approached it with a date. I know some people approach it with a dollar figure. I, I kind of took the opposite route. So they want to make sure they can replace their income and they can do it steady for maybe three months before they leave corporate. That, that's awesome. I help people put together their dropout date plan. It's going to be different for everybody based on what they're comfortable with. And then the third thing, the third plan I put together was my business launch plan. So this is, I mean, a lot of people think in entrepreneurship, you just like put out a website and people flock to it. Not true. Not Definitely true not true. All. Not true. Maybe, maybe there's some rare exceptions. Didn't work for me. <laughs> so so I, I had to make sure I had the launch plan. So what's my marketing message? Who, you know, how am I going to, I, I use primarily social media for, for my business. How am I going to find my people? How am I going to let them know what my offer is? And so that was the third plan I had to put together to make sure that my business would be a success. Um, financially, I, I saw, so you mentioned I am a real estate investor. I decided to sell one of my investment properties to kind of help me get through a couple months while I'm figuring things out. I was happy to do that. Um, I was fortunate in this, I mean, that's why I have multiple streams of income. I was fortunate enough to have that in place. So I could just be like, okay, sell it. Let's go. Just do it. Uh, so that, that helped tremendously. And it was you, time to sell anyways. So you have such an incredible mind. Mm -hmm. You don't even, mm -hmm. you, you probably do realize, but you have, you're able to compart compartmentalize so many different things and be able to see in the future to be able to plan mm -hmm. out. That's a skill. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of entrepreneurs that don't have that skill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't see tomorrow, let alone a five-year plan, let alone, you know, a couple month plan, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, but you are able to, from the chaos, take and put that all, all into something where you can tangibly understand it and follow that plan. Exactly. Exactly. That's one of my secret sauces. Mm -hmm. is that I'm able to envision the end. I'm able to see the light at the end of the tunnel when others might not see it right away. And I can help people see that. And to me, it just falls into place. And in, you know, in my mind, I just go, okay, you go, I'm very good at process. You know, I'm very, I go, okay, you go A, B, C, D, E, and you're there. And other people are like, huh? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you have, to, you have to walk them through it a little bit. But yep. I, yes, I am very good at envisioning the end. And when I put together plans, I start with the end in mind. And all wow. the details fall in. You have such a vision. You really do. And so that's, that I can see that's where you, where you can really, really help people is, is yes. planning and vision and putting those steps in order 
which one do I do first? Which step do I take first? And I think that's something that entrepreneurs uh, need because a lot of us, well, we kind of like, yeah, it'll figure itself out (laughs) type approach. (laughs) Yes. Yes. That works sometimes. And sometimes you have to surrender to that. I prefer to put a little thought into it. There is some surrender involved in some things. Absolutely. Yeah. I like a little thought. You, yeah, you're very good at that. You have a, you have a very bright mind. It is. I just wanted to put it out there because I can. Oh, thank you. I see people uh, for what they are. <laughs> I don't know how that's my superpower. <laughs> I guess if you want to call it that. Um, so, when you started this journey, you had it very well mapped out. Yes. Did anything pop up during that time that either limited you or you had to make, take a corrective action or something like that? Anything during that process? Yes. So as I said, I was in the corporate world for 16 years. And although I had a lot of direct, you know, self-direction in my day to day, there's always that taskmaster there telling you what to do, no matter who you are in the corporate world, even if you're a big CEO. And one of the adjustments I had to make when I, suddenly I had no taskmaster except myself. And that was, that was a little bit of a learning curve. That one surprised me because I'm generally pretty good at knowing what needs to be done and just going and doing it. I probably lost a good um, two weeks when I first started because I wasn't delegating things to myself or, you know, being accountable to myself as much as I should have. Mm -hmm. And so that was a big lesson. Fortunately, I could course correct and I realized it and I just, you know, slapped myself across the face and said, you know better, fix it and uh, (laughs) moved on. Um, So that, that was an adjustment. There's also that adjustment working from home full-time is different than working Mm -hmm. from home occasionally when you are in the corporate world, you know, things like, Oh, the refrigerator can be a distraction. Oh, there's, you know, the laundry that maybe I should put away. My husband works from home as well. And so we we finally got a system going like, all right, on Wednesdays, I am leaving the house and you don't know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go work and I'll be back by five 30 to help get dinner on the table. So that was just something we had to work out amongst ourselves Mm -hmm. because you know, it's, it's a distraction. So as it's glorious, absolutely glorious to work at home. You just have to be aware of some of the pitfalls. Um, I, as I mentioned, I had to make some pivots in my marketing messaging and uh, my marketing, my launch plan specifically. Again, as I mentioned, you, everyone thinks, or at least there's the, I don't know, lore out there that entrepreneurs, they just put up a website and everybody flocks to it. I have, I've, one, one thing I found is that my message, your messaging has to be crystal clear. Your perfect clients are out there and they have to know that they are, spe- you are speaking directly to them. And so I had to go back to the drawing board a little bit more than once. And all right, my mission statement, I need to change it around a little bit. Okay. My, my avatar, I need to change this around a little bit just because I wasn't resonating quite as well as I thought I would with some of the messaging I was putting out. And so I'm a big believer in when you make a plan, it will be wrong because it's a plan. Mm -hmm. Something will be incorrect and that's okay. You have to be wise enough to take in any feedback you're getting and pivot using that feedback and do what that feedback is telling you. So you still get to your end goal. Like strategy. Sorry. Yeah, the strategy to me doesn't matter. As long as I get to my end goal, that, that's the point. And so you have to be smart enough and allow yourself to pivot. Because a lot of times people are like, but I planned it this way. I have to do it this way. And it's not true. It's kind of like a scientific theory. It is a scientific theory. Until you prove it, and I mean really prove it, like this, this action step really works for me. This message mm-hmm. is crystal clear to my avatar. Mm-hmm. If you don't have that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a theory until you prove it, which means that gives you permission to pivot, gives you permission to change mm-hmm. it, it gives you permission to, you know, uh, tweak it instead of saying, oh, well, this is garbage, you know, throw that out, start all over. No, you, 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 it's a process of refinement, not, mm-hmm. you know, just tossing it all out like the baby in the bathwater type thing, you know. Um, you mentioned being at home, and I was going to ask you, how do you handle that with children as well? If you're both at home, you're both mm-hmm. working from home, how does that work? It is a lot of, so my husband is wonderful. We work very well together. We, we do have some business together and our business separate. 
So we, we do a lot of, I got it on the calendar first. So I get these two hours in the day. So there is, there is some of that race to the calendar. Um, during the school year, the kids are all in school or daycare. So we have like eight in the morning to about two thirty in the afternoon childless, mm -hmm. which is great. So we know that if we have calls, we want to schedule them when the kids aren't home. Um, the other nice thing is Tuesday usually is lunch date day. So my husband and I usually enjoy, uh -huh. you know, we go out for lunch or go have a glass of wine or do whatever. So that's nice. Cause then, then we have some built in time together when we're, we can turn our minds off business wise a little bit and just focus on us. Um, the kids, I make a point to see my kids work. Excuse me. I make a point to have my kids see me work. It's mm. important for me, for them to know what I do. And know that I talk to people like there's a lot of clients I have where I'll do zoom calls or video calls and my kids just like walk in and be like, Hey Caesar, how's it going? You know, and Caesar's like, Hey kids, mm -hmm. nice to see, you know? So it, it's kind of my people are those people that appreciate the fact that I have a family and that my family is number one to me and they get it and they respect it. Like if my kid, like if my kids were, that my kids are upstairs right now, I'm downstairs talking to you. If they were to come on down, I'd let them wave and say hi and say, okay. I'm That'd be finish. perfect. I've had yeah, cats and dogs and all yeah. kinds of people on my show. So <laughs> I'd my be dog is fine with that. Right now. Yeah, my dog I'm is in totally, the company right now. So who's our so. special guest? Oh, Bodie, my chocolate lab. <laughs> oh, I had a lab. He's, that was sad. Yeah, he's awesome. So oh. that, those are my people. If, if my, if I got slack or flack or lip from or sass from somebody who was like, I can't believe you let your kids just wave to me. Be like, well, you know what? We're going to have to reevaluate our relationship because that's who I am. Mm -hmm. And with six kids, they have a long leash at home. Like we, we expect them to self monitor and self police their behavior quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And they know we just, we've taught them. We'll, we'll let them make the mistake once we're a believer in mistakes with their kids. Let them make a mistake. They'll learn that way. Let them make the mistake once. Tell them nicely. Okay course correction when mommy's on the phone you need to leave mommy alone if mommy invites you in that's fine and you know they get it that way so yeah we're we're a little more laid back we're, we're definitely not helicopter parents with just the amount of ch children we have and i might add they're all 10 and under oh. so we have <laughs> little we have three to ten are is the age range so you guys are warriors, I swear. <laughs> we are warriors. Yes, we are warriors. Oh, but, for sure. But like I said, they, they know what we do. I mean, they get that we talk to people and we help people. And sometimes they, like, oh, mommy's doing a video on Facebook. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, that is, this is just what they know now. That's amazing and it's, it, that they can it, learn that that way. Yeah. They wanted their own YouTube channel for Christmas. Wow. I, they didn't get it. I don't know what they were going to talk about, but they had it in their minds that they were getting their own YouTube channel. That's amazing. And, and it yeah. is because this is our next generation. Do mm -hmm. we really want them punching the clock too? No, no. I mean, so that's very important to me. Yeah. It's kind of fun because we ask them frequently what they want to do when they get older. You know, what do you want to be when you grow up? And that changes, you know, most recently, one of them said a vet, they want to be a veterinarian. And they always add after with multiple streams of income. Awesome. And so I'm like, it's working. Ah! It's working. <laughs> so I, it's just so funny. They, they, might, <clears throat> they just know they need to say it. They don't quite get it yet. And they will. They will. Mm -hmm. They will. You'll teach them. You will teach them. Mm -hmm. hey, and okay. So, mm, Let's talk a little bit about your business in particular mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what do you do and how do you serve your clients? Awesome. So my business is called True Sisu Life. And let me explain what Sisu means first to, for people. So Sisu is actually a Finnish concept. My, oh. my mom is Finnish, so that's where we get it from. And it basically means um, it's about overcoming. And so what it means is, is somebody who has the grit, determina determination, and tenacity to overcome any obstacle, no matter the odds, essentially. There's no real direct translation into English. So that's the definition I gave it. So being an entrepreneur or just being a human in general, you're going to need some sisu from time to time. And we all have a little bit in us. It's not about being finished. It's about overcoming. And... I, like my sister, for example, the one who suffered a stroke, like we've used that. That's why I have that word 
that is our brand. Just, I mean, what she's overcome is just tremendous. And so I, I want to help people find and activate that within themselves. Mm -hmm. And so, as you said in my bio, I believe we all have the power to take action to design the lives we want to live. And I know we're going to be handed things from society or our families or media about how we're supposed to live our lives that we may or may not agree with. And so I am just passionate about, you know, no matter who you are, no matter what you are handed, if you don't like it, why do you do it? Mm. Let's find a way so you don't have to do it and be happy. Or if there's something you want to do, let's find a way to get you to do what you want to do. And so there, there's two things I focus on in that business. Number one is helping people clear their limiting beliefs and just getting rid of those limiting beliefs. I don't really believe in living in the past. However, I know our past can affect our future. So if we can just clear it, we can take action to move on. And then the second thing I do for a lot of people who are like me and probably a little bit like you, they were handed that mentality that you need that corporate job. You need that nine to five and that it's safe. Well, mm -hmm. I can give you, you know, handfuls of examples of how it's not. Me too. And mm -hmm. I have what I call my corporate dropout program. So I help transform Love it. those people <laughs> who are corporate employees and don't want to be anymore into entrepreneurs. So I love that. I love the dropout thing. I just love I that. I love it too. I yeah. really do. I, I love the way you put it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the dropout yeah. date. That's, that's mm -hmm. good. That's really, yeah. really clever. Mm -hmm. To me, <clears throat> I, I wanted to hit on something real quick though. You talked about overcoming li limiting beliefs. And if it's not mm -hmm. your secret sauce or something that you mm -hmm. can't say, can you tell us how you do that? Yeah, so I use basically NLP therapy techniques to help people overcome okay. limiting beliefs. And so let me give you an example of one I had personally. Okay. So one of my coaches and mentors cleared me. I was, there was a time, this was, I should have answered this for your earlier question. There was a time around October where in my social media, I was just really inconsistent. And all of a sudden it was just like, it was pulling teeth to post on social media. And so I worked with my coach and mentor on this. And she, you know, we basically asked, what is the purpose of your inconsistency? And we routed it back to, it's my need for control. And so this is, this is the Cliff's Notes version. Okay. So this, you know, took 20, 30 minutes to do. We routed it back to, I need to control. So we cleared some of that need and we found out there was an event in my past when I was about eight years old. I think it was eight eight years old or so where I just didn't have control. And I was like, well, why am I doing this? I'm not going to do it. So we cleared that. And then I, I went, you know, kind of back to my desk the next day. I'm like, all right, it's time to post, post on social media. And I did it. Like, okay, I did it once. Good. I can do it again. So I put up my whole schedule. I pre-scheduled my posts. I had everything done. And I've been like consistent as all hell since October on my social media. And so just clearing that, you know, what? It, so our, our unconscious mind is just like the most spectacular thing ever. It's truly amazes me, like the power we have between our ears. And so whatever association my unconscious mind made with that event when I was eight years old, it led to me being inconsistent. We just cleared it and boom, I'm done. So, and I'm fine now. So it's things like that. There's a lot of events. Like I've cleared the emotion of fear before. And I went back to the first event of fear. It was when I was four years old. My grandpa had an aneurysm, essentially was in the hospital. And when you're four years old, they, you know, they don't tell you, oh, grandpa had an aneurysm. And, you know, this is what happened. They're just like, grandpa's really sick. and He might die. We don't know what's going to happen, you know? Mm -hmm. And yes. that scared me, you know, that's going to scare any four-year-old. So, and it's just amazing how, like, that was the first time when I, my unconscious mind realized that I was fearful. And so that, that's how I do it. I, I have some techniques I can use with people to kind of clear those negative. For, it's going to be different for every, every person. They might need to clear people. They might need to clear beliefs. They might need to clear negative emotions. We can help you get through that. We'll just call it your baggage in the past so you can start taking action. It holds people back so much and they don't even realize it. It really holds people back. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some myself, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and so I, I understand thoroughly how it can just paralyze you. Yeah. You don't even realize why you're not doing the one thing you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. You'll do everything else. Right. You'll do all the menial tasks. You'll, you'll do mm -hmm. everything that's not making you any money. You'll concentrate on those things rather than doing the one thing that you need to do to get your business to go. Mm -hmm. And for me, I found out uh, some of it, 
and not all of it, but some of it was from childhood, from, mm -hmm. you know, being told that rich people were bad yep. all the time, just all yep. the time, you know, well, there's certainly no, their money certainly ain't going here because all the rich people have it. And they, my mom had a favorite, favorite saying it's uh, rich bitches. Sorry, but <laughs> seriously, that was her phrase and mm -hmm. nothing against her. That's, that's not here, neither here nor there, but it got so deep in me. I'm a good person. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have all this. I don't right. want to be rich because rich people are bad. Rich people are horrible people. Why would I want to be a horrible person? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, it's funny how that just tricks you into denying yourself or self-sabotage. Yes, absolutely. But it does. But it it does. does. Totally does. And I, and I, I love the fact that you clear those, those beliefs. It sounds like it's, it's not a, a long process either. No, you can make, you know what? You can make just an astounding improvement with one session. And it's one of those things, once you try it once, you want more of it. It's like a really good massage. You know, it's <laughs> kind of like you get a really good massage. You're like, ah. Oh. That feels so good. I need to, I need to come back. <laughs> right. So it, it's, it's, it's kind of like that. It's amazing. I love the fact that you incorporate that into your business because mm -hmm. so many people go through imposter syndrome and, mm -hmm. and a lot of the limiting beliefs and things like that. I'm going to ask you this question. What do you think the number one or the, maybe a prevalent one that keeps coming up with your clients? A limiting uh, that, belief. You know what? It's funny you said imposter syndrome because I just did a video for my clients on imposter syndrome <laughs> earlier this week. And so that, that is totally one of the big things I see. And really it comes down to three different fears. And you might have one or all three. It's uh, fear of not being good enough or not being worthy. Fear of failure. So my business will fail. My whatever I'm working on will fail. Or the fear of not being safe. So you're going to draw out the haters or the negativity and people are going to come attack you with their words. Oh, I've had Probably that not. already. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so that's really where, that's where that imposter syndrome comes through. And the good news is, okay, so here's the good news. If you have imposter syndrome, you're not an imposter. So remind yourself of that because a true imposter would know they're an imposter and just not care. So if you have imposter syndrome, that means that you, 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 you're caring about it and therefore you're not an imposter. And the cure, one of the cures for imposter syndrome is finding evidence to the contrary. And so if you're feeling like I'm not good enough, find some evidence to the contrary. So when I was in my corporate job, in my email, I would keep a folder I called at a girls. Nice. So whenever I got an at a girl from somebody, no matter who they were, no matter who they were, it went in the folder. So it could have been, you did a really good job on the presentation. You handled the situation well, whatever it was. And so when you're having those days that we all have, we're just like, oh, I suck. My work sucks. <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever you're doing, I know those you days. Yeah, you know <laughs> I those really days. do. You can just open up your folder of girls or boys and remind yourself that I am doing good work and making a difference. So if you're in the corporate world, you can do that. If you're an entrepreneur, you can do that. Be proactive about getting your customer testimonials. So if, you know, use the, use the, the, the premise of really good customer service to follow up with your customers, ask how their service or product was, and then keep that file of good testimonials. And if they give you a bad one, you can quickly take action and course correct, right? Then you, then mm -hmm. you know you have a problem. Yeah. If you're a parent, parents get imposter syndrome, like big mm. time, time. Wow. I don't, yeah. Like, oh, I'm a horrible mother. My kids are better off with, you know, my parenting is just dooming my children. Just send them off to grandma and grandpa right now, you know. Um, I've heard a lot of that, but I never equated it with her post yeah. imposter syndrome. Yeah, and now that you mention it, that's yeah. absolutely true. So the cure is the same thing. Keep your, keep your little file of good parenting. You know, like my kids said, you know, keep those little, I love you, mommy letters. You're the best mommy ever. You're the best daddy ever. If they're old enough to text you, keep those texts like, love you, dad. Love you, mom. You know, keep your file of evidence to the contrary. So when you need to go remind yourself of how awesome you are, because you guys are all awesome, you have it right there and you're going to feel better. Wow. You, you are awesome. I'm just letting well, you thank know. Thank you. 
Yes, <laughs> you have so, you have <laughs> so many good ideas mm -hmm. and and takes on things that and I've been doing this show a while and I I I'm blown away and that's not easy for well, me because uh, I like it. <laughs> I like it too. Okay, so if someone was just going to start out, mm -hmm. I know you have a you have an A to A to Z plan basically. Mm -hmm. But what would be your first thing that you would advise them to do? Oh, good question. I want, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I call this clarity corner. I want you to be very clear on you, first of all, as an individual. What are your core values? What, is your, what are your beliefs? Because that drives all your actions. I also want you to be clear on the mission of your business, how you want to make a difference with your business. I want you to be clear on who your avatar is. So who's your customer avatar? Like, I want you to get it down to a name. Like one of my friends, he's a, he's a wonderful digital marketer. His avatar is Bob. Bob. Bob has like the glasses. He wears the khaki pants. Like he took it down to extreme detail. Like Bob likes cheeseburgers, right? So I want you to get as detailed as you can on your avatar, who they are. And you have to be clear on what problem you are solving for them. So what is their issue? How do they feel now? How will they feel after they work with you or buy your product? So I want you, that is step number one, because that's going to drive everything else you do, is getting clear. Go to your clarity corner and write it down. I want you to actually write it down. Don't type it. Write it down on paper. All, all these things. And I, I can't remember how many I have. I think I have about six different worksheets for this right now. Um, so you are crystal clear on your core values, your business's core values, your mission statement, who you're serving, what their transformation is, and your niche. Niche down as far as you can. That's amazing. And then you can write your business plan. Wow. Mm -hmm. Someone works with you, they are going to have a roadmap to success, no doubt in my mind. Absolutely. No doubt in my mind. Mm -hmm. And the other reason you want to do that early on is because if you need to pivot, you can pivot early. So if you find your niche might not be profitable, then you can change it. Change like it early on. Like yeah. you're targeting college students and they have no yeah. time or money. So Exactly. So <laughs> unless you're selling them beer or burritos, well, you, you know, might want to change. Yeah. <laughs> selling them beer, you might make some money mm -hmm. out of it. Just, mm -hmm. Yeah, you're correct on that. <laughs> you correct on that. Yeah. They always have time for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. They do. I okay. did. <laughs> so we talked about the limiting beliefs. We talked a mm -hmm. little bit about what you do and, and your business. Mm -hmm. um, the clients that you serve, mm -hmm. what is the most rewarding thing that you get out of it? You know what I'm saying? And at, mm -hmm. and at, and at, um, what, at what point in that journey do you start feeling that way? So it's like, if, if you, you know, you, you know the success, but you know the mm -hmm. overcoming the beliefs and all this. Mm -hmm. I mean, every little piece of the journey gives you fulfillment. Mm -hmm. But what gives you the most fulfillment on that journey, I guess is what I'm trying to ask. I know yeah. it's kind of, kind of complicated. So when, when they have a breakthrough, because they're going to have at least one breakthrough on this journey. So whether it's, I never thought of that before. Wait wait, I have new information. I'm processing. I can do this. That moment when they realize they have that breakthrough that they can do it is amazing. They haven't done it yet. They will, but they believe in themselves at that point. And they believe that they are on the right track. And it be, now it, it might've been a fantasy before for some people being able to drop out of corporate America and start their own business. Now it is their mission. So at that, it's like, it's like an inflection point. Okay. So they're like going down this curve and like, okay. And then the inflection point, like, Oh crap, I can do this. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then they just take off. So yep. Yep. somewhere in their journey, that's they perfect. have that inflection point from when it goes from fantasy to mission. It was absolutely what part. I was trying to find there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. the light bulb comes on. Yes. Yes. I'll call it the light bulb point. I like there it. Go. I'm, going to, I'm going to use that. The light bulb you, point. You can use that. That's perfect. I'll send them a light bulb when they have the light bulb point. There you go. Or just send them a picture done in some kind of a Photoshop or something yeah. with the light bulb there over their go. head or something, mm -hmm. a little certificate or something. Mm -hmm. But um, I know 
that there's a lot of people out there that do want to start their own business. It mm-hmm. is in corporate America. Okay. Um, what would you tell that person right now that's contemplating that, that's kind of mulling it over in their mind, mm-hmm. whether mm-hmm. they can or they can or they should or they shouldn't, you know how you get stuck in yeah. that? Mm-hmm. What would you say to them? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say it is possible. You can do it. I want you to be clear on why you want to do it. Mm. What is your why? Because your why is like the gas in your car. It's going to get you on your journey from point A to point B. If you run out, you're stuck, right? Like you're stranded on the side of the road waiting for AAA to come get you. (laughs) So I want you to be very clear on your why, why you're doing it. And I want you to realize it's not a fantasy plan. So being an entrepreneur is work and it's rewarding work. It is work. It's not like you're sitting by the pool eating bonbons and drinking wine and unicorns are pooping rainbows for you. It's, it's like, it's work. You will have setbacks. You will have challenges just like you do in your corporate job, except those setbacks and challenges will be for you. Mm -hmm. So if, if you, you need to be able to handle that first off, you need the right mindset. That's why I worked so much on mindset with people because it is a different mindset. Yes, it is. So I just want to be sure they are crystal clear on their why and that they, what, what I see a lot is people, they have a good why, they have a good reason and they just expect somebody to come and hand them a business. And that, that, that tells me a lot. That tells me you're not ready. Mm-hmm. That tells mm-hmm. me that you need, like I, I make people bring me their business. I don't hand businesses out. I don't, I don't vet the business ideas. If I think it's stupid, I will tell you I think it's stupid very nicely. And if I think it'll work, I'll tell you I think it'll work. But I'm not here to like, you know, give you the, the thumbs up or thumbs down. You have to, you have to be in it or I'm already not, have it started. You're not the business in a box, lady. No, I'm not a business in a box. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. That's good. That's a mm-hmm. good thing. Yeah. Because you can't so, be an entrepreneur when you have somebody else do it. Exactly. I make people do it. I'll help hold you accountable for a little while. And then my, my theory is I, as you're growing into your, your journey as an entrepreneur, you, you need me less and less. I want them to not be me by the time they get done with me. Nice. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Can you tell us um, what you have right now, whether it's courses or whatever you mm-hmm. have, I just want to give the floor to you to be able to talk to the yeah. people out there about that. So my flagship course is the corporate dropout course. It's a 12 week course where I help you get clarity on your business and launch or relaunch. If it's already a side hustle for you, I, my goal is to make it from side hustle to primary source of income. Um, you know, like I said, we do all that planning. We do clarity corner. We do business plan, dropout day plan, launch plan. It's going to look different for everybody. And by the time they're done, they're pretty much ready to launch and take off. So that, that is the corporate dropout program. I also do, um, I incorporate some of those clearings I mentioned into that with people, depending on what their need. I also do just clearings for people and help them get rid of baggage, limiting beliefs, self-sabotaging behavior that's completely, that can be completely separate from the dropout plan. If your life design does not include dropping out of corporate America, awesome. Let's get rid of that other stuff so you can climb that corporate ladder and be excellent at what you want to be excellent at. I fully support that. So that, that's the other thing I do. I, am, I have a couple other things in the works. I'm not going to talk about them yet, but stay tuned for, but wait, there's more coming later. So. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, <laughs> I, I honestly believe that if someone takes your course they, and they apply themselves, because mm-hmm. we have people all the time that take courses and they're just like, they, they mm-hmm. don't do the work. Right. So. We have to, we I've have been to guilty of that, that myself. Yeah. But we have yeah. to mention you, it, you know. Yeah. It, it, like like I said, that, that's why I don't have a business in the box for people. Mm-hmm. Those are the people that just want, they want to be handed something and they're not going to do the work. So that, that's like a great way to just filter out, and weed people out right there. They need an actual business idea or something they've already started. And I can help them take it to the next level or get it off the ground. So, but yeah, I've been guilty of that before. I've totally signed up for courses and done them and just not, not done the work. And it's like, well, lesson learned. I get it. I've been there. I've been there. So. <laughs> but I believe that if someone does take their course, your course mm-hmm. and applies themselves, I totally believe that they, they can skyrocket. In oh, absolutely. 
Absolutely. There's so much detail in what you do. Mm-hmm. There really Absolutely. is. Absolutely. A lot of people and have courses and they, you know, it's, it's, um, it's not step by step by step. It's kind of concept by concept, which is different. Right. And mm-hmm. I think what you offer is more step by step. It rather is. Rather than is. just the concepts. Mm-hmm. So I think that's yes. a differentiator for you. It is. So it is. the last part of everything here, uh, I want you to just look out, look out to the people that are, are, mm-hmm. here, are hearing us right now and, mm-hmm. and tell them what's on your heart about your business, about, you know, them, whatever's inside of you, I want you to give it to them. Oh, that's a good question. All right. So mm-hmm. <laughs> like I said, I've said this before, you guys have the power to take action to change your life and design the life you want to live. I understand how you might be feeling. It's hard. It's scary. And you can still do it. I want you to just figure out regardless, whatever your goal is, whatever your life design plan is, figure out one action you can do differently tomorrow than you did today and go do it. And then the next day, figure out one action you can do differently than you did the day before and go do it. And you're going to find just little action by little action, you are going to be changing and improving and moving forward before you even know it. So forget about the Yes, keep the big goal in mind. Keep your end in mind. You, you, you will not get there tomorrow. You will get there baby action by baby action, baby step by baby step. And I want you to have fun along the way. Be sure to laugh. That was amazing. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. And everybody there, if you could click the subscribe button and the like button down there and the little bell, I really would appreciate it. Um, You can get everything that we've been talking about in the links below. So everybody, you have a wonderful night. Thank you for listening.